Well guys, the time has come. I have news about Beatrix. Beatrix has a new friend. That's right guys, you know we've been talking about it forever. And this, I'm gonna do a little bit different of an angle on her. And I'm gonna have to put some, she's very, she's very scaredy. So, understandably so. So now that Beatrix has an actual full set of tail feathers for a change, we now have a new little green and yellow orb <laughs> of bird. Um, so if you're wondering why I've been kind of um, MIA for the past month, it is because I have not only been going to pick her up, and this is Jade, by the way, uh, Jade is a, another Keel Build Toucan with very similar issues as Beatrix. Although, oh, Beatrix is gonna, yep, gonna poop. Um, although a little bit different, and I wanna talk about that. So I've actually, Jade has kind of been under my care for the past seven months. Um, essentially what happened, and we're gonna talk about, I'm gonna have to, um, probably get some extra footage of Jade where I'm inside and I film through the window so she's not so afraid because she will interact with the other birds and sit next to them now. I've been spending a lot of time trying to get her warmed up to being outside and around other birds directly and interacting and all the other birds getting used to her. And it actually happened a lot quicker and easier than I anticipated. So, but let's get into her story, and I'll, I'll probably get some footage. We'll record Beatrix here. And I'll probably... Rhea's like biting at my foot. Hold on. <laughs> um, I'll have to get some additional footage to put over where she's not seeing me. Um, so she acts a little bit more normal. But there's, it's a, there's a huge contrast now between, you know... The, I mean, she's basically where Beatrix started. And... Now, you know, Beatrix will, Beatrix will come and, and take food out of my hand and she will come near me and she's not, she's not friendly like this little guy <laughs> or like Rhea, but you know, she's not as afraid of, oh, you're just going to drop that one here. Come here. Look. Oh, that's not yours, buddy. I was going to give it to Beatrix. Jade will not take food out of my hand. Um, so, as you all know, she still runs a little bit, but she will come reluctantly. I'm sorry about the background noise. Someone's cutting the lawn. I don't know if you can... Someone's cutting their lawn, not mine. I don't know if you can hear it or not. But anyways, so Beatrix and Jade have very similar pasts, I feel. I, I think that Beatrix was more likely taken earlier. Uh, if she was taken from the wild, it's possible she could have been in a backyard breeder situation and she just wasn't socialized. Maybe she was parent-reared rather than hand-reared. Um, <clears throat> Jade, on the other hand, is... And I'll have to put... I'll just put footage over. Um, Jade, on the other hand, another female. I actually, I actually thought she was male at first, but she's been under the care of a friend of mine. Like I was saying, and I'm, my thoughts are all scrambled up, so you'll have to forgive me. Um, so basically, a friend of mine that, I don't know if she would want me to say her name, because she's pretty private, so I'm just going to leave her name out of it. But she operates a macaw rescue that's private, and she doesn't really advertise herself or anything like that. She just does it because she enjoys doing it. And she has um, lots of different, well, she mainly does macaws uh, rescues. And then she has other birds as well, but she's started to take in birds like uh, Beatrix and Jade uh, not too long ago, you know, a couple years ago. So she was looking for, like I was looking for, for, for Beatrix, because we both realized they need to just be around other birds and they're not going to be like, you know, normal toucans. She uh, was interested in getting um, a, a mate or a partner, whatever you want to call it, for her bird. So she ended up finding these birds that were in pretty rough shape in the back of this guy's van in these small cages, canary cages. Um, 
And she, I think she initially just thought there was one, but when she got there, the guy had two. So she took one and she contacted me and said, you know, basically, I know that you're looking for something for, for Beatrix. And there's two birds here. The guy said he wanted to breed them. And I'm gonna get in more into the breeding thing because that's the angle I wanna take. I actually filmed this video before, but then I thought um, at her suggestion, she was like, you should talk about, you know, the cautionary tale of people wanting to make quick cash with toucans and the ways that they suffer because of it. Um, Beatrix is a little bit different because she was sold as a pet even though she was not a pet at all. You know, and even arguably a tame quote unquote toucan it doesn't make a good pet, um, at least in my opinion. I mean, they are friendly, don't get me wrong, and I do love them. Wild birds definitely do not make good pets. Um, and we've seen that with Beatrix. You know, she's been a, a big handful to get where she is now. I mean, she's just now keeping her tail feathers instead of breaking them constantly. So her, Beatrix is a little bit different. She was sold as a pet. Somebody kept her in a small cage, and, or this, you know, teenager kept her in a small cage in her bedroom and then went off to college and just left her there alone, uh, leaving her parents to deal with it, and their parents didn't want to do it anymore, and obviously Beatrix is not very friendly, um, at least not compared to a normal captive friend. Sorry, Lalo's trying to climb on my head. <laughs> at least not compared to a normal, like, captive bred type situation. Um, Jade, uh, had a similar background, and I, I believe, I think if, if any of these two birds are wild caught, it's not Beatrix. She might have just been a backyard breeding situation where everything was just kind of half-assed. Um, because you can look at Jade, and you can tell, I mean, she, yeah, she's rough, her wings are all botched and clipped, and her tail, don't, don't mind the murder shed back there, <laughs> we are going to get rid of that soon. Um, her, her wings were botched and clipped. I mean, she can't fly at all. Her tail, tail's missing. Um, I'll show pictures of her when she was found. She had a full set of tail feathers when she was found, but then, you know, after she had reached out to me and said, hey, I'll go and get this bird if you want to get it. And I spent about a week debating whether I wanted to or not, because as you all know, we've been wanting to move and build enclosures outside for these guys. And that was my first priority. But she was like, you know, if you don't go, I mean, she's right now, she's in the back of this van. Well, at the time we thought she was a boy, but DNA said she's female. Um, if you don't get this bird, she's going to die. She's in the back of this hot van, just staying in the van. And it turns out the guy wanted to breed uh, these two birds together, these two keel-billed toucans together, put, and put them in a, put them in a, he had some experience with other birds. That's the thing. So it's not like he didn't know about birds to an extent, but you know, you look at the prices of toucans and it's a way, that, sorry, Lalo's still messing with my, the back of my head. Come here, buddy. What are you doing? What are you being crazy for? Um, they're completely different animals. So he, he had uh, these two keel-billed toucans and a small macaw cage, both of them. And obviously that's not a recipe for anything but one bird killing the other. Because toucans are just very, they like their space. I'll just say that. And it's not, it's not too uncommon for one bird to kill the other one. And <coughs> even large enclosures, excuse me. <coughs> ah, sucked a fruit fly down my throat or something. Um, so he had these birds in the small cage and obviously they tried to fight Jade and... The other one my friend has. Um, and uh, since they were doing that, he moved them into a two smaller cages in the back of this van. And uh, they were very noisy, obviously. So, um, and kept them there. And that's where they were found. And I'm assuming Jade wasn't there with them for very long because she had a full set of tail feathers when she was found. The guy clipped her wings. Clip both their wings. Somehow wanted to breed them and clip, clip both their wings. And not only did he want to breed them, but they were uh, both female. So unless he's got some frog DNA laying around, he can splice in with them. Uh, I don't think they're going to be breeding. <laughs> so you know, uh, people see it many times as a way to make a quick buck, and these poor birds are 
shoved into these situations, either as pets or as, a, you know, attempted breeders. So, you know, and it's just, you know, they need a lot more than, and then they let on. So, uh, Jade, her beak looks, oh my God, her beak is just incredible looking. And that's what makes me think she was wild more than anything because her, the thing about nutrition with toucans is if they don't get the proper nutrition as babies, as we saw with Maeve, um, you know, and that's one thing that kind of makes me wonder about Beatrix too, is, and she could have been taken very young, but who knows. Beatrix, uh, her, her beak's, her beak's pretty good. It's a, it's a pretty good beak, but with captive toucans, you'll often see that their colors are like kind of smeared and there's more gradient and they're kind of faded and, um, and you can see on Beatrix speak that there's a little bit of, I don't know if you can see on the camera here or not, but there's a little bit of like kind of ripples and wrinkles. It's not perfectly smooth and like the orange and the place between colors isn't quite as defined as what you would see on a wild bird because the wild birds obviously get the proper nutrition that they need and their beaks grow properly. They grow perfectly smooth, they grow very colorful, they grow very defined lines, and Jade is just, her beak is just a, it's a sight to behold in person. And makes me remember why people like uh, Keel Build Toucan so much, because she is, she's a beauty. And when she gets all her feathers back, she'll be even more beautiful. And she probably won't ever warm up like Lalo or Rhea. Rhea's chilling down there eating watermelon or something. Guava. I don't know what, what else they have left in the bowl since earlier but but yeah so they i mean beatrix has a friend now so that's awesome and then excuse me and it may not be a male um but you know that so far they're all getting along really well i'm actually extremely surprised and i have this i have this little branch here set up as a little bit of a ramp i have to babysit them I've, that's a lot of the time i've spent lately is watching them out here all day and just mediating and making sure nothing wrong happens. Nobody tries to attack each other. And so far we've only had like maybe one incident with Beatrix and the others have been pretty uh, welcoming, surprisingly, which, you know, shocked me. I was expecting to have to break up some fights, maybe, you know, at least once or twice a day. But so far, I mean, the last little over a month, well, I didn't have her out here for the entire month. She had a little period of a short quarantine and um, warming up to do to being in a larger enclosure but not as much as Beatrix did she didn't have any muscle atrophy and again she's been with my friend for the past seven months um, you know originally I, we were gonna just she was like look I'll I know that you would rather wait uh, until you have these enclosures built and you're moving and all that kind of stuff until you bring her in but the most important thing to both of us was just that she stayed alive and and didn't die of heat stroke or starvation in a, the back of a van because that would just break my heart so i didn't really want to see beatrix just chase lalo off a little bit maybe not intentionally though i don't know you know i'd it sucks sometimes because then you know you get these pictures of these birds and these horrible conditions and and there's not anybody else that I know of aside from my friend and I that really you know handle or are willing to handle a wild toucan that's not they aren't trying to breed them because they're uh, you know they're a lot to handle so um you know as you guys have seen they're not even these guys are even like Lalo and and what you doing buddy look Watch out. I mean, even these guys are kind of hard to handle sometimes, even though they're relatively friendly. He keeps trying to bite my arm and stuff. I don't know, he wants me to play with him or... Oh, you know what it is? They know I have blueberries in my pocket. Look, here. There you go. You happy now? Okay, here. I forgot about those. I'm sorry. <laughs> you want this, Beatrix? Look. Come get it. There you go. So, um, you know, it's going to take a while to get Jade up to that point if she ever even does. And the main thing is just that they get plenty of space and socialization and, 
you know, stuff that I can't provide to them because they want to be around other birds. They're not like Lalo and Beatrix that are not Lalo and Beatrix, Lalo and Rhea, excuse me, that are happy with just being around me. Um, they need other birds. So anyways, guys, everybody welcome Jade to the flock and yeah. Thank you so much for watching. I don't know what else to say other than that. You'll learn more a little bit about her story than over time. And uh, thankfully the guy that did have her, I was told said that he's never gonna try it again because it was just too much. And um, that's good. So, you know, I don't mind if people breed toucans and stuff. I know a lot of people think that I I just completely hate it. But, like, if you're doing a good job and they go to good homes, then that's fine with me, you know? The problem is the people that can give them good homes and then do well with breeding are very few and far between. And most of the time, breeders, they don't care whether the home's qualified or not. They just want to make some money. And, you know, that sucks. I hate thinking that people view them as a stack of cash, you know, because they're not. They're very sensitive, empathetic intelligent little creatures and they deserve you know the world and they don't deserve to be subjected to that sort of thing so even Beatrix is much of a pain in the ass as she is <laughs> oh no it's okay Look. yeah see Beatrix is still a little panicky but she's not nearly that's what she used to be like Jade Jade won't bite she's still at the point where she just wants to hide and run but um yeah, that's, and she can't fly, which is a problem. I can't have her out alone with any of them when she can't fly, because if there isn't a problem, then she can't go fly to a different perch and just get away. She's just kind of screwed. So for now, I'm just going to watch them until her wings start getting back, and I'm sure that they're all getting along. And, uh, you know, you guys make that possible. I'm, I have the ability to do that and work with them. There's a lot of stuff that goes on that you guys don't see, and it's hard for me to film sometimes because it's just me doing it. But um, the patrons, the viewers, the m new members on YouTube, and people, all that kind of stuff. People who uh, do super chats on streams, all that. Uh, all make it possible for me to be able to do this. And we are, are expanding very soon. So I have stuff in the works that I will make public once I know for sure it's secured. So, um, ow, Lalo, what are you doing, buddy? What are you trying to bite me for? Stop it. Stop it. Anyways, guys, I love you all. Thank you so much for watching. We will see you next time. We're going to have streams soon with Jade. And we will be doing starting a member stream soon as well. Because that's another thing I've been working on is setting up cameras out here permanently. Um, so that we can do the member streams frequently during the week. And those streams are just going to be, you get to watch the birds kind of sit out here and vibe. And, you know, listen to them. Hop around, interact with each other, eat. Just normal bird stuff. Uh, there won't be really much interaction, if any, from me. It'll just be a way where you guys can view them more frequently if you're if you're a supporter. So check out check us out on Patreon and check out the uh, membership join button below the video if you're interested in that. And again, can't say it enough. Love you guys. We will see you next time. And bye for now.